Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts Taskmaster Season 3. Season 2 was won by the Serious Strategy Gamer, much like Season 1. So the real challenge is, can he get three wins for three seasons in a row? Uh, if I'm going to be the judge of that, I'd say no. I'm going to do my level best to stop that streak of his. Now, Season 3 was created again by Brother Monroe. We have five weeks in this season, and it's going to be developing a little bit different than the previous seasons. Because we have bonus points, and some of these bonus points are going to be assessed across the entire season. Pre-season, you need to select the country you are going to play as. You can choose either the UK, Germany, France, or the USA. You must stick with this choice for all five weeks. Each week we are essentially bidding for a contract to produce ships for the resurgent Koninklijke Marine, or the Dutch Navy. Several bonus points can be had across the season. Oh, sorry, across the season. Cheapskate. The Admiral with the most cheapest ships awards gets one point. Undefeated. Any Admiral who doesn't lose any of their ships in all five weeks gets one point. Untouchable. Any Admiral who doesn't get hit by a single torpedo across all five, week, all five weeks gets one point. Inviolate. Any Admiral who manages to achieve the win the battle without critical damage condition in all five weeks gets two points. That's a tough one. Spectacular. If you cause an enemy ship to explode and sink, and this means main gun flash fires, ammo detonation, etc., you get a point. Um, popcorn flash fires of secondaries, ammo detonation and secondary armaments, etc. don't count. Nor can you receive multiple points per ship. So that's the bonus points. And then for this week, we have the light cruiser challenge. It is going to be the Admiral's Choice. So I get to pick for my season UK, Germany, France or the USA. Um, and I'm going to be taking on a destroyer and a light, sorry, two destroyers and a light cruiser from China. Requirements. The main guns must be 6 inches or larger. The ship must come at least with 4 torpedo tubes. It must be capable of doing 30 knots and long range or better. Those are the requirements, but there are also points to be had. Build a ship with very long range, 1 point. Sink the enemy light cruiser, 1 point. Win the battle, 1 point. Win the battle without taking any critical damage, as denoted by the red and black icons above your ship, for 1 point. And the admiral who wins the battle with the cheapest ship, 1 point. Um, let's say I want to go with a specific country for the entirety of the season, UK. UK is alright, they get a really large battle cruiser hull. Um, Germany is good overall. France has some really interesting ship designs, and the USA has those very wide main structures, especially later on, where you can have a ton of secondaries positioned. Personally, I prefer France. I think they have interesting hulls, and I'm going to go with them. So, for this week, we are designing a light cruiser. Main gun, 6 inch or larger, 4 torps, 30 knots, and long range or better. Now, the modern light cruiser. Uh, 30 knots, check. We're going to set this thing to very long range, so that it's going to be capable of already getting that one point. When it comes to going with a cheap ship... Mmm... Um, yeah, do I go for that or not? The Admiral with the most cheapest ship awards gets one point. So let's say that we have... Um, I can get this thing three times. I can get another point. If I make the cheapest ship among all four of us, all four being Brother Monroe, Siri Strategy Gamer, um, Spartan Elite and myself, I can get one point. If I get the cheapest ship today, I get one point for this week. Hmm. We do have a slight tech advantage. I suppose I want to at least upgrade my armor. Uh, it will make it more expensive. But not by much, because I simply don't have a lot of armor. Um, 1.9 million, 2.3. Let's go with the standard tower, modern tower 1. Secondary tower, rear tower 6. And I'm going to make it as small as possible. This will allow me to dodge torpedoes more, much more easily, in fact, and also reduce the shipping or re reduce the price of the ship. Currently, 9.8 million. Uh, this will already be 10.7 million if you max it out. You're looking at 10.9 million. So this is going to save me some money. The ship needs to be capable of doing 30 knots, not necessarily more than that. 
more means you're paying more for an engine. And this ramps up really, really quickly. If I want to go 32 knots, I'm paying 9.8 million. If I'm doing just 30 knots, I'm doing 8.1 million. That is a substantial difference. It also means my funnel doesn't have to be as big. 45% engine efficiency, however, is a bit low. Uh, if I go for forced, I can push that to 100, but my price goes to 8.7. If I just buy another one of these, I'm also looking at 8.7. 8.70, 8.78. So it is going to be two thick funnels. However, no, that does not uh, interfere with smoke interference, fortunately. Turning circle, 409 meters. Really? That is not great. Let's go for many bulkheads. Normally I would go for max, but I still need to put on some guns and <laughs> I still have quite a bit of stuff to actually put on there. I could, however, go for gear turbines as opposed to this. That's 600,000 and it pushes my displacement down quite a bit. Main guns, six inch or bigger. Considering the threat, two DDs and a light cruiser, I'm going to go for the smaller guns. So six inch. And I'm going to go for dual barrel. Because they're slightly more accurate. So it's going to be an eight gun light cruiser. Looks like we need to scoot this thing forward just a touch. What's your problem? There. Okay, the ship also needed to have torpedo launchers. A total, oh sorry, a minimum of four torpedo tubes. So I can have those over there. And if I make them as cheap as possible, so standard propulsion. Um, yeah, that, well, this could work as a sort of short range shotgun weapon, if you will. <laughs> if you want to call it a shotgun weapon with mere two tubes. All right, I'm going to go with, and this is a break of tradition, an armored citadel as opposed to the Citadel 5, for the simple reason that this is going to probably increase the price substantially. Or does it? Yeah, it well, a bit. Anti-flood, I would like that. It's not that expensive. Some barbette armor. Uh, this is going to ramp up the price a lot. That's a million for an auxiliary engine. But it does increase turning circle. Or reduce turning circle. If I go for... And actually, yeah, I want to have at least one. Because it just boosts your damage control ability. And water pumping. Shaft 1. We're looking at a ship worth 11.3 million. Ship is still slightly off balance. The aft weight offset's too high. 0.1. I'll take it. Um, then... A rangefinder would probably be recommended, but that makes the ship too heavy. Also, if I'm gonna go, if I'm gonna go for standard reload, I'm gonna be waiting for 16 seconds for any reload. If I go for an auto loader, I'm only paying 200k more, but my reloads get pushed down from 16 to almost 10 seconds. Worth it. Um, oil. This is going to be better for fuel stowage, but not necessarily better for my price. Because, oh, that's 12.2. 13.6, that's expensive. Oh, here, middle ground, 13 million. And I'm at displacement again. A problem that I do see with this ship is armor, or rather the utter lack thereof. Which means that I might not be able to get the point for winning the battle without taking any critical damage. Hmm. These things are very, very thin-skinned. Let's say they also have six-inch guns. And uh, we're fighting at about 5,000, 7,500 meter range. That is 5.5 inches of pen with lidite provided. Uh, maybe they have, I don't know, cordite. So they can pen 8.5 inches of armor. I don't have anywhere near that. So that means that I would not be able to get that point. If, yeah, that's probably not a good idea. If I'm going to go with this route of making the cheapest ship, 
I might lose the battle, which means I will not get the battle for win the, po uh, the the point for win the battle and the point for win the battle without taking any critical damage. Hmm. If I increase the displacement, I would be able to put quite a bit of armor on the ship. The turning circle would be pretty dreadful. The price would not nearly be as good. But at least I would be able to work with either more guns or more armor or both. Preferably both. Let's pull this back. I don't get why the funnel... Well, it sort of sticks. Can we go one more notch? 0.6. Not really. 1.5. Oh, sorry that we're moving it the wrong way. Uh, back. 0.4. Good enough. This means I am, however, relying solely on these six inches. I do have access to the French triple threes. 20,000 each. Oh, they don't fit? Is that for two inches? It's for two inches. Okay. Mm. In that case, I want a three over there and I want a three over here. Okay, now I can tack on some more armor. And potentially a sonar system. Main tower cost plus 25%. Whew. Yeah, that's 600k. Hydro 2 is much better, at least when it comes to pricing, but detecting torpedoes is harder. Okay. Uh, let's tack on some more belt armor. And what happens if I switch to the all or nothing? Not too much. The all or nothing gives me a better bonus, because this is 108%, this is 118%. So I get effectively more money out of my armor, if you will. Okay, so the points that I'm going to go for currently are uh, guns of 6 inch or larger. Check. Oh, sorry, that's the main requirements. Um, very long range. Check. I want to sink the ship. I want to... The enemy ship. I want to win the battle, and I want to win the battle without taking any critical damage. So I'm going to get 4 points total. I'm sort of making the ship cheap-ish but not very convincingly. Deck armor I probably do not need. Turret armor might be more valuable. Unfortunately, I can only get six inches at any particular point max. There. Now the ship is actually too big. Slim it down a little. I'm gonna get to the point where I can just fit everything on the ship. Not there. There is a sweet spot where everything fits. And we're approaching that now. There. That's it. Okay. Reseat the main turrets. Reseat the main tower. Reseat everything. You over there. You over there. Remove the torpedo tubes. Secondary tower. Effectively means I have to rebuild the entire ship. But at least I know what I want to go with. Triple there. Triple there. Torpedo launchers, duels. Here. Four weight of set two and a half. Push this thing back. One half, point six. Still need to add another funnel over here. That ought to do it. I would normally put a bit more armor on there, but I don't really want to. And I'm now pushing the ship price back to 14.5 ish. Bit more belt extended. That'll do. Okay. Oh, hold on. No, 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 no. This will not do. I'm supposed to have that. Crap. Let's 
trying to fit as many of these requirements into the ship as possible. Turning circle is going to be pretty bad. 412. For a light cruiser, that's a lot. Alright, well, let's put this thing to the fight and see if I can get all the points that I want to get. Now, I hope the AI is merciful and does not create some sort of behemoth of a ship. My ship price total 14.5 million. Where is the enemy at? It is 1926, it's 1920 for them. Which means I'll spot them slightly before they spot me, possibly. But it won't be by that much. I'd say this is actually one of the more normal designs that I've created recently. Here it is. It actually looks like a normal light cruiser. Which is more than <laughs> I can say most of the time. Yeah. Top profile looks pretty good. Okay. Now then. Find me some enemy ships. There is no uh, do this within X amount of time. So that's not a point that I need to go for. Either for season wide or in general. What I do want to make sure of is that I do not get hit by a torpedo. Because getting hit by a torpedo immediately... Um, well, makes you unqualified or disqualifies you for getting the point for any admiral who doesn't get hit by a single torpedo across all five weeks. What do we have here? That's a lot of guns. That's ten six-inch guns, twelve three-inch guns, and another ten single three-inch guns and torpedo launchers. Good lord, you're a big thing. You are a big boy. At... Seven and a half kilometer range, I can pen 6.3 inches of armor. I effectively have 12 inches of armor. I'm not sure what he has. She. But I kind of doubt that I can do damage at this range with armor piercing. I might be able to do that when I get a little closer. I do have the Hydro 2. Oh, this thing turns pretty quickly. That's good. <clears throat> okay, secondaries and mains on the DD. Ignore the light cruiser. Crap, and it immediately starts smoking. Accuracy 2.3. Damage to the funnel and fire. Very good. I'm assuming I've been torped by now, so I'm going to turn around. Another hit. There is the torpedo. That was more of a rough assumption than anything else because I did not have any ID on any of them. The 6 inch hit the main tower but it was an overpen. You can get an overpen with high explosive? Wow. Didn't know that. What about the light cruiser? 96% ID, 98 full. Li Shui, 33 knots, maximum bulkheads, 10,000 tons. She is substantially heavier than I am. Those 6-inch guns are firing Lidite. Can they pen me? They cannot. Can I pen them? I can indeed. Are you out of your smoke screen? You are not. Okay. Now the Li Shui did torp me. But I don't know when. I should see those torpedoes before they see me. Hit on the destroyer. Destroyer fully ID. Destroyer Chang Fulu. Minimum bulkheads. Good. Easy pickings. She has 24 torpedoes remaining. That's potentially going to be problematic. So, let's see if I can deal damage to that thing as quickly as possible with my little 3-inch guns. Get rid of that threat. Meanwhile, let's have the auto-select so I can get some main gun shots on the Lishui. Which still cannot hurt me. 
Is that Lidite Light Shells or something? Yeah, Lidite Light. Terrible combination for them. Because Lidite is pretty good if you go with heavy shells. It just sets fire like nobody's business. This thing has maxi bulkheads. Uh, 4.4, 4.6. It doesn't really matter that much. We have just been torpedoed. Nope, not that way, that way. Hard starboard. Fire on the Chang Fulu. Where's their other ship? Oh, somewhere back there. Torpedo's been detected. Let's do a nice loop and come directly towards the destroyer. I have plenty of six inch shells. Especially since they cannot very well hurt me. I'm not concerned about that light cruiser at the moment. Only their torpedo launchers. All guns on the Chang Fulu. At this range, we should really be able to get some damage in. Yeah, she's starting to flood, and for a DD with minimum bulkheads, that is death. You poor little DD. Three damaged engines. I'm not sure how they're getting rid of the water that quickly with three damaged engines. The entirety of the ship is on fire. There. Uh, ooh, you just torped me. How rude. Fire on the Jingxing. We're still building up our accuracy. It's going to be a little lower now as the Jingxing joins in, or jumps into a smoke screen. And she really does not have anywhere to go or any way to kill me because she just launched her torps. And that's the only launcher that she has. It's not like she has one on the other side of the ship. Flooding, command slowdown, fire, more flooding, 50%, structural integrity is dropping as almost the entire ship's burning up and she's dead, extensive fire. Very good. Last survivor, Li Shui. I think armor piercing is my best bet. Yep, flooding. How much armor do you have? 2.6 inches. They are going to torp me right about now. How many launchers? Two port and starboard. How many did you just send? If they sent half the torps, oh, they sent all the torps from the starboard side. So they effectively, again, are in the same position as the DD. They cannot do much. Smoke up. Engine damaged, but immediately fixed. That was some effective repair from their side. Flooding. I'm not seeing it though. I mean, I'm getting two flooding warnings, but the ship doesn't seem to care about it. How good is your detection? Hydro 3, it's better than mine. <laughs> okay. Um. Nevertheless, I could just go into that thing and torp it. Especially since these things take a while to reload. But if I torp from here, I'll probably miss. Let's hope I can get a couple of shots on their stern, inflicting a bit of damage to the rudder. That would allow me better odds to get their torpedoes to hit. Damage to the funnel is nice, but it's not what I'm looking for. Fire, rudder damaged. There we are. She's starting to flood. Those six inches of hers, still no match for my, th my ship. No threat. Engine three is damaged. More flooding.
This seems like it's a pretty effective design. Might not be the cheapest, but I have not suffered any kind of critical damage. And so far, I don't expect that to happen. So I should be able to go with the point for killing the single or killing the light cruiser, uh, winning the battle, winning the battle without taking any critical damage, and build a ship with very long range. And the Lishui is done. Job done. Mission complete. So that's four points for the first week. And uh, at least one of the five weeks that I need in order to get undefeated. And the Admiral, who doesn't lose any of your ships in, the in all five weeks, gets one point. And untouchable. And the Admiral, who doesn't get hit by a single torpedo across all five weeks, gets one point. Um, oh, and also the Inviolate. And the Admiral, who manages to achieve the win the battle without critical damage condition in all five weeks, gets two points. So I'm well on the way to getting a couple of those. All right, excellent. Let's hope that the Dutch Navy is going to accept this ship as the winner. I hope you guys do. Let me know what you thought about it down below in the comments. Be sure to check out the other guys linked down below in the description. And join me next week for the next task. All the tasks uh, requirement for this week will be linked in the description. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. See you next week.